From my home to yours, welcome to EMS at Sea Level. Today's guest is Matthias Anderson, founder and CEO of MTech. Before we get into the questions, Matthias, can you give me a quick two-minute introduction to you and to MTech? Sure. Uh, nice to meet you again, Phil. Uh, Matthias Anderson, uh, founder of MTech Industry, located in Sweden. Uh, background within the electronics industry since the last 25 years. That's the only thing I know. That's the only thing I live by. Um, we have a software company with software-defined robotic solutions uh, that helps customers increase efficiency and quality. So those yeah. are short team. Yeah, that's fantastic. And just talk me through the last couple of the last couple of months, and I guess we're getting to the three-month stage now from kind of Chinese New Year. What you've seen in terms of impact on you, on your customers, um, and just you know the whole what's been going on in Sweden, I guess. Yeah, sure. No, I think this situation where we're in right now is. Uh, I'm sad to say that we that we will benefit from it in terms of customers trying to <clears throat> digitize and automate much more. Mm. The situation is, of course, this is a new new thing that we didn't, didn't see coming. Uh, any one any one of us, but uh, coming to the fact that companies needs to be able to over overlook their supply chains, mm. the sensitivity of supply chains has become more and more uh, obvious. Uh, we have a situation where. Our clients really are considering now to, to move production back or yeah. to, to the market. And I do believe that the, the, the industry, this is one of the biggest disruptors in the industry for the last 20 years. This is way beyond the, the lead free introduction. This is um, basically as the introduction of the S&T line way back yeah. in the 80s. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a huge impact, isn't it? And when you look at it over the different period, and you mentioned a number of things there, the um, that people are talking to you about about digital transformation, but they're also talking to you about reshoring or or moving their geographies, and they're talking about visibility in the supply chain. Have those things happened as we've gone through this time, or is that kind of all happening at once? It it, it has. Uh just by measuring the amount of inbound calls we got from other sea level uh, people in the industry, the interest for actually digitizing and, and uh, creating sh full visibility in their supply chain mm. is just exploded. Uh, now, also, there has been some time for reflection uh, among the, the peers in the business and how can they actually come out of this stronger, faster, better, mm. and cheaper. So I think the ones that actually rethink their current situation uh, will be able to actually benefit from this situation as well. Yeah. So it's, it's a time for reflection. It's a time to, for action as well. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think we've got this kind of urgency, which is the actual fight against COVID-19. And I know you've, um, you've taken some action there in terms of um, diverting some of your production capacity. Tell me a bit about that. Yeah, one of the first things that we did was start looking into how can we support the local community. You, you know that we already have a really good collaboration with the local schools and uh, yeah. trying to do as much as we can. We have a, uh, actually our supply strategy currently is actually the, 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 the phone, the, the region, the, the phone number region that we have. Uh, I don't know what, what the English word for it, but uh, yeah. Uh, so what we're trying to do is, <clears throat> what we did was start doing face masks and then yeah. we delivered to the hospitals and the local uh, uh, caretaking homes yeah so yeah so you know you do what you can in the in the immediate term and you deal with the urgent and then we get to this medium stage which is the important stuff and you've got a whole lot of um, technology you've been developing that seems to be kind of fitting people's requirements for that digital transformation but also even for stuff around you know social distancing you're doing a lot of as you say, flexible automation, these digital building blocks that allow you to plug in robotic solutions where, they're, where they can operate and where, where they're needed and not just allow people to distance, but actually provide a, a tangible financial benefit at the same time. Yeah, I'm happy you bring that up because we're just about to launch now what we call MCEL, which is the, uh, the modular approach towards an adaptive automation. We've had uh, the MCEL solution installed at, at a couple of customers over the last years. Um, we, and the effect of the, the, the last updates of the software and everything that we do is, one case, we're able to, to reduce about 20 persons in a line. Uh, 
with the respect of also having adding more value to the product mm. uh, more traceability having more information at point of views and creating the, the foundation for predictive analytics uh, so we see an enormous interest right now on, on the m-cell approach that we have and, and of course beneath that this is what we call the m-brain which is the uh, the factory operating system that we, we bring that actually f provides power to the M-cell solution. So. Yeah, so you have that underlying factory intelligence software that you, that you use, and then you have these big um, digital building blocks. And I think the first one you're releasing is um, M-cell insertion, and that's gone into some big contract manufacturers and is already having, a, um, having, a, having an impact. Was that something that you saw as a specific um, need to resolve a, a, a challenge there, or was that something that you felt was an easy problem to solve? What made you choose insertion first? Insertion is the reason why we've been, we know the last 25 years, been moving to low-cost countries, which now not any longer are low-cost countries, mm -hmm. uh, many of them. Uh, so the challenge that we're trying to solve, or that we actually have solved, is the just the problem to program a robot. Today it's extremely cumbersome, or yesterday it was extremely cumbersome to program it. Is You could talk up to weeks and months to make just a motion pattern of a robot. What we're able to do now is to what we call a zero touch programming. So in less than a minute, we're able to produce the program completely for the robot for an assembly station. And, and of course, not only that, but also to create the value of having the robot actually adopt to its surroundings, which makes us a little bit different. And we've been working very hard for the last three years to develop this. Mm. Uh, we've had some customers have been the first customers that we've been trying out and they've been really patient and coming with a lot of great input. Yeah. And we've had a lot of issues uh, with, the, with the equipment itself. Uh, because we're pushing it to the limits. We're pushing it to where it's supposed to be working. And all those things has now been solved. Yeah. And look into the fact that like S&T um, uptake within the industry, uh, now that has reached a level of commoditization that it's the machine costs basically the same all over the world. Yeah. Now we're targeting the, the labor cost, making sure that people are not sitting there and, and having a lot of, ergonomical issues, uh, carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, all the, the human aspects of it. At the yeah. same time, uh, enforcing them uh, the, the, or, or uh, emphasizing the impact of having a um, short lead time, uh, short development time, and short um, deployment time on the solution. We're able actually, if we have all the information available, we could actually, in theory, uh, deploy a full M cell within about 40 hours, yeah. which is, of course, that's yeah. required. You need to have exactly everything, but so that the deployment time becomes really, really short. Um, yeah. uh, I will not go out and promise a customer a weekly time of, unless they really, really are key to yeah. make it happen. Unless that's critical. Yeah. And you, you know, you, that deployment is really interesting. One of the challenges at the moment is installing software. And I know you've kind of taken what I might call a Swedish approach of, uh, of basically being able to ship stuff out and, um, and actually deploy it remotely. So that speaks very much to the, um, the simplicity in terms of the installation and, and, and delivery of the solution. Yeah, because going back three years, uh, one of the first things that we tried to accomplish was how to create a cell or a solution that actually has a hundred second changeover or less. We're not really there yet but we're within 10 minutes that we can do a changeover of a product. Also looking through the fact that when we, right now we have a remote deployment in an Eastern European country for a client. Um, and the COVID-19 situation has actually helped us in that way because we, mm -hmm. are, we are forced to adopt. So, and, and we have to live by what we're saying ourselves. So, which also is really cool that we are able now to, to, to do this. And yeah. it gives us a, a possibility to scale faster, actually. Yeah. And when you say zero touch and, you know, that super fast um, software, that's um, programming. That's basically using CAD data from the board to create the, um, the insertion program. Yes, so that's a, a big part of it. So we have all, of course, all the CAD, CAD information of the board and components and, and, and the rest. But one of the key 
secret sources that we have is mm. our closed loop machine learning aspect that allows the, the cell to actually learn its, its surroundings, learn the behavior of the product and remember it. And things don't need to be perfect. And that's the key thing. So we don't need to have our things bolted to the floor. We don't need to have everything super um, heavy equipment. So our things are our solutions. It's you can roll it in, you can roll it out, and it mm. will actually identify its surroundings by itself. And not only that, but also adopt itself throughout the the manufacturing. With that, it also showcases to the user that if there's a, a variation that shouldn't be there, then we actually highlight that and feed it back as well. Yeah. So yeah. it's. That's a, that's a secondary um, benefit, but that's actually one of the coolest thing about it as well. So yeah, yeah, and I think that's quite compelling. But I like this idea that pe for people that are making that journey for digital transformation, that journey towards the smart factory, that they can take a a process, put this digital building block into manage that process for them, and they get visible ROI on that, and then they can. You know they can they can use Embrain and things to connect and go on to the um, and go on to the next thing. Just going back to the um, the current status with COVID nineteen, what impact has that had on your um, you know your kind of internal team? Your I guess everybody's a bit dispersed now. Sweden's taken a slightly different approach to elsewhere in the world, so um, you know I think there's a little bit more herd immunity going on there. What does that mean to the the day to day running of your business? No, we're in full operation. Yeah. We are in full operation. The people that uh, has any type of symptom, they decide to work from home if they want, or they just stay home. The first priority is the health of the of, of the people. Mm. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And at the same time, everyone is so keen to to be part of of uh, changing what we're changing the world basically of manufacturing. Yeah. So everyone's committed to work from home. Um, we have um, we have a di um, distributed team. We have people in Spain as well, uh, people in Germany, and, and of course, every country has its own situation. I think Sweden. I, I will not uh, argue if we were, if we're doing right or wrong, but I do believe that Sweden is such a big country, so we are kind of naturally isolated anyway. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So. There's a bit but, more space. Uh, yeah. So no, we're, uh, we are blessed uh, that we haven't had uh, any known cases in the company mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and of course any any type of symptom people stay at home and then yeah yeah now with the digital tools that we have this is another proof that we're gonna digitize faster yeah it's a, uh, the zoom and the teams and, and the hangouts and everything it just yeah. it works great now yeah yeah it's surprising how how well we've been able to um adapt to this isolated world um, and the tools that are available. So what's keeping you sane? What's keeping you sane at home when you can't go out to restaurants and you can't go out to bars? I know you're, you're probably working all the time, but are you binging anything on Netflix, on, on Apple TV or? I'm working. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the binging part, um, watching documentaries about AI and machine learning, basically. Yeah. To see what other, others are doing. So. You're a geek, you're a sponge, that's what it is. You're just ab absorbing all that information. And when you look at the, um, the EMS industry and, and your peers in the industry, um, obviously on the, in the uh, manufacturing side, what advice would you offer them as we, as we kind of come through this and come out of it? Because it's, a, it's been a difficult time for manufacturers, particularly those that are on, you know, on tight margins and have been cash strapped and they've got a, They've got to ramp up their business. Some companies have had to switch lines off and have had to, and are in the process of, of switching them back on. What, what kind of nuggets of advice would you give based on your own experience? I think there will be a tomorrow, of course. The sun will rise again. And, and uh, I think using this time now for reflection on how the ideal supply chain would look like. Mm. Uh, knowing a supply chain, of course, looking even through the internal supply chain. How can we create visibility? How can we actually know, reduce the, the sensitivity of such a uh, pandemic? Now everyone will be aware of this for the next 20 years to come, at least. Yeah. Or maybe we tend to forget fast as well. But I do believe that the same thing that happened after the financial crisis, 2008, where 
every, everything went straight down for a long time and the supply chain was, was emptied out. Uh, we have the same situation now. We, even though this drop was much faster, the lockdowns will have severe impact on, on certain levels. But I think the companies that are able to rethink and not just rethink, but actually do something about it, yeah. will come out of this crisis way more stronger than, than, uh, than competition. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I think there are some real opportunities and there are some real, uh, you know, kind of um, standout examples of things that, that can be done. And I think there will be that desire for digital transformation. And I, you know, I like this idea that people can take a, a step-by-step approach and they can, and they can manage these processes. So um, yeah, I look forward to hearing more about that. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for your candor. All the best with the, um, the launch of MCEL. And uh, for those that have been listening, until next time on EMS at Sea Level, thank you and goodbye. Thank you, Phil.